Du har mål. Du har dröm. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farm and Life Villa Forge. For those of you who are new here, my name is Laura. This is Declan. This is Mam, aka Mam and Dad. And today's episode, we are going to be answering all your questions. So, first question on the list. Shoot. Are you ready? <laughs> it's a long, How old are it's we? a long list, Laura. It is a long list. How old are we and introduced ourselves in French? Well, if I say my age in French, nobody will know. Okay, <laughs> I'll start it off. Uh, bonsoir. Just suis Monsieur Garner, La Forge, France. Uh, 56. 56. Ta-da. <laughs> Je suis Emily Gardner, j'ai 52 ans, I am 52 years old, don't like admitting it. Je parle un peu de français, mais c'est Laura qui parle couramment. Je suis Laura, j'ai 22 ans, et voilà. That's all. 22! Oh, 22, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, next question. How big are the three farms? So three all together, I suppose. You. Well, the three farms combined, we farm about just under 1,300 acres. So between this farm, the farm we rent, and the farm... That we the, own two farms and we rent and one. And we rent farm. one, yeah, yeah. It's about 1,300 acres all in. So in the channel, we've only ever shown two farms. We've never shown... Yeah. Up in the so one farm is 30 kilometres away, so... And it's all cereal, mainly. And it's up for sale at the moment. Yeah. Because it's, it's handier two just to have farm. the two farms nearby. Yeah. Right, so why did we move? To farm. Basically. Uh, well, one, because uh, it was hard to go on to the town of four to buy land in Ireland, uh, with the price of it. And if I had a farm in Ireland, I don't know, I might have moved. But uh, it's just it didn't justify paying, at the time, it was about 20... 20,000 20, an acre. 20,000 an acre in Ireland when we moved compared to 2,500 here. So, and I had entitlements here and I had a lot more else going for it. So, um, no, it was a lot cheaper here. It's 2,500 a hectare here. Or 2,500 a hectare, yeah. Yeah. Here. yeah. So, uh, compared to that's about two and a quarter acres. Yeah. Two and a half, two and a quarter. Yeah. So, yeah. that was. Uh, the main reason, plus the weather as well. Yeah, we looked at a couple of farms in Ireland, but uh, if we had to borrow to buy them, we'd have both had to stay working full time to pay, just to pay for the farm. The farm wouldn't pay for itself, so uh, we said we'd look at farms in France. We used to come here a lot on holidays and loved the countryside and you'd see farmers making hay and everything at a nice leisurely pace. They weren't rushed. Dinner time had come and the tractor be left in the field for two hours in the summer. There was no panic on getting the hay in because they knew they were going to have a good few good days together. And um, when we looked at it, we couldn't believe the price was so cheap. So we looked, we said we'd put our own farm up for sale and contact an agent and have a look. Well, our own farm, our own house in nine acres. Yeah, well, a few sheds. <laughs> As we said before, uh, we're working farmers, we're not from farming backgrounds. And... The person wouldn't only sell us the nine acres. We're well, just looking for a site, really. And that's how we started off wearing calves in a bucket. And that's where we are today. Right. Uh, next question is, what are the best and worst things about living in France? Well, best thing is the weather. Worst thing is the language. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things good and there's some things bad. The language will always come into it, uh, no matter who you ever talk to. Uh, there's a lot of things, well, the land shape, the weather, there's no road tax uh, for vehicles and all like that. The health system is good, the education putting, system putting, is good. Huh? The health system is good. And the, the health system and the education for the children. My are three good. kids, they're all run through school, you could say, free. Um, and as Emily said, the health thing is just second to none. So, yep. so best is weather. Best is the weather, is the and, weather. and I suppose it's a more relaxed pace of life. Okay, where are we? 
Um, are we doing up the houses to let us hold the rentals? Yes, we are. Um, I think we said that in very one of the very first episodes. So the house, we have one house that's nearly done. That should be up sometime around spring, uh, depending on what happens with COVID. And then we have another two houses that we should be doing up, but they have a lot more work to them. So after that, we'll see. Yeah. But basically, yeah, it should be They're on not bad. They're that, livable now, yeah. but... Uh, that was the idea, to do them up for holiday houses, but then COVID struck and nobody's gone on holidays, so uh, we have to wait and see now how it goes. So I'll have one done, hopefully, and then we can see whether we can let it out, whatever the restrictions are in France, and then whatever the restrictions for travelling in the summer. Yeah. So that's for the holiday houses. Um, oh, this would be for ma'am. Is there a lot of paperwork in France compared to uh, Ireland? Yes. <laughs> Yes, well, there is paperwork in Ireland too, but there's a lot of paperwork in France. Yeah. And uh, mind you, the French, the Department of Agriculture, and that are very helpful. If you go in, they might not speak English, but they're very helpful at explaining and, and trying to help you understand it. Um, but yeah, a lot of paperwork, paperwork to everything here. There's red tape, and sometimes you need to know what questions to ask to get the right answers. Okay. But it's the same like Ireland you register your calves, you register your movements. Yeah, you register. Yeah, you re- yeah everything is online now, so it's hand- handier that way. You register all the med- the medicine and stuff, the treatments that you give to the cattle, and the sprays and things that you use. So, paperwork. All right. Would you say, would you say France is a good place to go if you want to get a bigger farm? Oh, definitely. Yeah, it depends uh, on where you're coming from. <laughs> but if you're coming from Ireland, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like cattle prices are good. Uh, they're still viable. We have everything we have expanded here, uh, threefold since we came or more, and you know the firm has paid for everything. Uh, I know you're putting a lot of it back in, but what else can you do with money when you? That's what you <laughs> <want to do. laughs> But it doesn't come for nothing. You have to work for it. Yeah. yeah. And depends on how you spend it. If you spend it on big machinery and expect, you know, you have to be well, realistic. Well, we don't buy no machinery. You have to be realistic. Uh, we buy some no machines. But uh, as well as that, both of us agree or they off. That doesn't justify buying no machines for us. Uh, people do it, and, but we just don't like going down that road. Machine has to pay for itself. Yeah. yeah. And be not too electric. Hmm. And not, not too many electric, something edges. you can fix. Um, where are we? Oh, what do we miss most about Ireland? What do you miss most about Ireland? Family, friends, just general chat and stopping to meet, you know, meet people in the street and stopping for a chat. And if there's functions on at home, like weddings or christenings or communions or things like that, birthday parties. Summons. <laughs> <laughs> They're not always summons. <laughs> uh, you know, and being able to, to, to meet like that. But um sense of sense of humour I miss. Yeah. Uh sense of humour. Yeah, the Irish sense of humour haven't we haven't found it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> anywhere the odd else. Match, yeah. Other than that, the food I don't miss uh I do. Miss I the miss brown the bread. Yeah. Brown bread and the sausages and the rashers. Uh, the first thing if we ever go back to Ireland the first thing is uh, Big fry at Dublin Airport. Fry, <laughs> we'll have it at them or sorry for eating. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Right. Um, are there any good farms still available to buy or rent? So there must be a lot of people looking to come over. There is. Yeah, a lot to buy. There's not a lot to rent because the French farmers will snap up any land for rent very yeah. quickly. Um, but to buy, there's a lot of farms for sale. Yeah. The French don't, you know, they see it more as a business. They can happily just walk away from it at the end. If there's nobody to pass it on to, they'll sell it and, and walk away from it. Now, you have to prepare yourself as well, because we got a bit of a shock when we, the first day we came visiting farms, uh, we had all, the first, I remember the first farm, they said there was two houses, uh, it was a big farm as well, and there was accommodation for 200 cattle in one shed, and there was all these houses and studios and whatnot, and uh, well, we wanted to slash up to find the second house in the Briars. Uh, it was off in a little laneway, there was no 
It was two gable ends. Right up to the door of the main house. Yeah, but the, the second house was just basically two gable ends. Just only a room. I don't yeah. think there was even a roof. And the land was scattered and, and it was wet enough. Uh, it was a way different part of France than this now. And um, we kind of knew this area ourselves because for years we had, well, Emily dragged me over to France <coughs> before we were even married and all this. So now she's paying back for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we had been around this area and we knew around here was pretty good because when we used to go different places in the summer, uh, we used to find everywhere else was burnt up and around here it wasn't. So now the last three years we were burnt up on us. <coughs> but yeah. that's it. French don't seem to care much for houses being too big or too hot. They're a lot very run down, especially in rural and you were saying before about road frontage that people yeah. don't really care for road frontage or agricultural land is agricultural land yeah, yeah. and that so, should be something very yeah, different yeah we thought that when we were buying this farm By well, the there was a lot of road frontage here <coughs> and we could sell but you're only allowed to build uh, beside a, a commune or another f a house within beside. a certain distance of electricity and water yeah, yeah. Like that. you can't you just really... build it where you want yeah yeah um where are we is there an equivalent to macra for future farmers to help each other out? It's macra, Laura. Macra. Macra, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spanned it macra. Whoever <laughs> asked the question. Uh, there's an FDSEA. It's kind of for young farmers, helping young farmers. But well, we were never young enough to join it. But all I ever see them do is organising strikes. Yeah. I don't see any social things happening out of it. But maybe that's because that's all I read. I thought macra in Ireland was like the lonely arse club. No. Opera is a good social thing, no, for, uh, for meeting people. <gasps> right. Do French rules still require farmers um, to meet your own writing? I'm <laughs> found writing. Do French farmers still require farmers oh, taking their retirement benefits to cease active farming under the pack? And what's your opinion on it? Yeah, they do, of course, yeah. You can't be doing both. You're either retired or you're farmer. Yeah. And actually, the retirement age here is 62. And when 56? We... No, 62. When we oh. came, it was 60. And there was uproar on strikes and demonstrations when they wanted to rise it to 62. And we yeah. were telling everybody it was 67 in Ireland and they couldn't predict What the guy we? What the farmer? Yeah, farm there is certain conditions. If you've, if you've worked for 40 years and if you started work at 16... Sometimes he can finish at 56. Right, the guy we bought the farm off, he was 56. He was retiring at 56. Retiring. Yeah, you're 56 now. Maybe you can retire. Fish. Yeah, I can retire, yeah. <laughs> sure, I'm retired. I live on the drink. <laughs> this is your retirement plan. But no, you're either farm or you're retired. It's either or. And the plan about... I had to laugh here once when Laura was here with her friends. And that's uh, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, she wasn't even gone to secondary school yeah and all her friends were here and they were all talking and they were kind of saying what were they going to start working at and this and that and they all knew they hadn't even started work and they, one of them they didn't really care about the work but they were all saying they had so many years to go to work and then they knew how many days they had to work and all before they could retire so they all, all they think about is retirement yeah, and the time they were looking at putting up the pension age, the schools, the students in the schools were retired. They were the biggest ones. And they, had, they were the biggest ones demonstrating, and they hadn't even started work yet. It's the same when we're cutting the maze here. All the farmers talk about uh, retirement every time. They the plan on wait. fishing and hunting and drinking. Yeah. <laughs> they can't wait for retirement. Yeah. Well, they kind of work to live, and I think we work Well, there's an odd one. There's a, an well, old guy over the road when we came here. No, there's, a, there's an old guy over the road. He was 70 and he was proud that he was 70 and still working. And yeah. He wasn't. So it's the odd one. Well, yeah. it's not everybody, but it's just... Yeah, yeah. And the, well, the English guy, an English friend of ours, he bought a farm and he was 58. When he bought it. When he bought the farm. <gasps> and they thought he was crazy and why did he do that? And now he said farm until he was 70, so... Right. What tractors did we have back in Ireland? Ford. Well, the 4630 and we had the 7740. They were our two tractors in Ireland. And uh, they're here now. And they're here now. 
And when we came here, there was a McCormick maximum... Uh, 110. 110. Hated it. Um, and there was a Case Dyer. Uh, it was an, not a bad writer. And an international. But, small and there was a small international. international um, as well, that she was a uh, what four five two three a five two three. <laughs> so uh, we sold them. Uh, we lost money on the case tire, but uh, we've gone okay with the rest. Yeah, when we bought the farm, we bought it with the machinery on it and all the cattle on it. So yeah, the manor too was on it as well. We couldn't just pick and choose. We want this and we want this. Maybe. If we were stuck our heels in at the time, we could have, but at the time the farmer was selling lock, stock and barrel, so it was all or nothing. And all the farms we looked at was the same yeah. in them all. So. I suppose it's the farmer's way, handy way of getting out and he gets rid of everything in one go. Well, for me, you walk into a business and... Ready to run. There was cattle here. Uh, I know a couple of lads that bought farms with no cattle and it took them nearly two years to stop it. We were up and running from day one and... Uh, like they left everything, we couldn't get over the left aisle, cabin jacks, you name it. Even in the the rented farm we have there now, uh, to just stuff. walk away and leave everything. So if they don't want it, they'll just leave it. Yeah. But in the house, they had light bulbs and everything on, everything that they'd need. Yeah, and anything that they'd want for a garden, it's a one garden. And yeah, we we signed up for the house here at ten o'clock in, in the solicitors. That's the notaire. And, and uh, we came back here, luckily we had a torch, but when we came into the house, uh, there was no lights, they had taken the lights and everything. Uh, of course, I told you before, we, we came with an agent, George Libri, and I had to ring him first thing ne the next morning. And he said, oh, that's normal to do all that, but he never told us that. But, um, Foreign. <laughs> we had to sleep in sleeping bags that night, because we hadn't time to unpack or anything, but... Uh, Minor hazard. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's it. Um, was it easy to find new friends when we moved over? Ooh, we hadn't really. time really. Yeah. <laughs> we mixed more with Irish. We found Irish people that were lived Irish and, and English. Irish and English that lived within maybe an hour, an hour and a half of here, and uh, we used to meet up with them fairly regularly. And then anyone that was French was difficult to mix at the beginning because. I had school French and nobody else had a, a word of French when they came. No, we didn't have any French. No. Laura went to school and there was nobody speaking English in the school. Oh. And not even the teachers. They never and had a foreign student never before. Had a foreign student. And Luke and William went to a school further away, well, about 10 kilometres away. And there was, I think, five English students in the school with them. So that was okay. And the teachers spoke a bit. And the spoke teachers a spoke more. a bit of English, yeah. And they used to hang around together. And of course, the teachers tried splitting them up, saying they'd never learn French if they stayed hanging around with the English. And afterwards, the headmistress told me she was afraid to put the Irish in with the English. She thought maybe there might <laughs> yeah. be a rouse in the class. Yeah, we'll have to talk to the other, but fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, in time, you get to know people. And Through the farmers, we know the farmers. Yeah, the farm, we know like the neighbours and farmers. And they come to help the anyone and that. Well, I was in the coma with his, or cutting mm -hmm. the maze, or something that we have some connection with the or land beside. Yeah. We seem to be involved with him, but, uh, or if we go buy a bowl off someone, <laughs> if you meet them again, it's, they're friendly enough and all like that. So, so if, you're interested in, if you're interested in hunting as well, there'd be a big thing. They're a lot into hunting. Yeah. Um, so that'd be another way to meet people then. Yeah, but you have to do the chefs, the hunting license in French. Yeah. But well, when you go to another farmer, uh, you're always asking for a drink. Uh, what the, that parano, is it? Pastis. Pastis. Pastis, yeah. So like uh, anything, it's, it's a licorice. Yeah, they're all, you're always asking, even if you buy anything or whatever it is, there's always that and the big bottle up at the Better, table. Uh, and, or a cafe. Yeah. Now, I don't drink, <clears throat> and I remember once I drank rosé. Yeah, lights up. nearly had to be carried out with cider. Yeah. By the end what of that, that's what well, that's cider. That's, 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 drunk. <laughs> that's yeah. only lemonade. Uh, <laughs> Two percent. <laughs> but uh, they had this real strong rosy, uh, 
But the, I just drank it to be in with the rest of them, but... Uh, they weren't really able to talk. Out. You weren't able to talk French either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you were finished. Um, yeah, if we hadn't come to France, where would we have moved abroad instead? Probably New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, we were considering New Zealand, but it was just because too far. they spoke English and it looked nice, but it was too far away. Yeah. And we knew nothing about it. At least we had been to France several times, but we'd never been to New Zealand. Yeah, from the first time we went in holidays years ago, many years ago. 1988, whenever that was. Yeah, 1988, whenever that was. Two <laughs> uh, years. I just loved it. It was so big and, uh, you know, the snap traffic jams. Even today, yeah, we can, well, I know if you go up around Paris, the yeah, that's problem with traffic. We're in the middle Down of the here, we're on all the roads there, and there's no traffic jams. And Unless there's cattle being moved, that's about the only yeah. traffic there is around here. So, uh, it's just open spaces and weather, and back to the weather again, but uh, no. Yeah, yeah, we were stopping traffic here one day on the road because we were moving cattle just across the road, about 100 metres. And the gendarmes, the guards, pulled up behind me, and I thought, oh gosh, we're breaking the rules or something here now. And they wanted to know if we wanted them to redirect the traffic. <laughs> They're very um, understanding of farmers in, uh, in the area because the there's a lot of farmers there. I was moving cows, we call it the hill field. And uh, I was, I'd not always work a dog, but the cows weren't used to the dog and there was two giving out a bit of a hard time in the field. So I said I'd run in, chance it, and this woman came along and she stopped and she got out her big fur coat and all painted up. And she said, oh, I'll stop the, the cattle here, or I'll stop the traffic and that, and you go in and help the dog, or the, they call it a chien of the dog. So uh, I don't think that would happen back at home. <laughs> <laughs> Another morning I was hanging a gate and it was kind of falling on me. And this woman walking the dog, she came in to give me a hand. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they are helpful enough. I find them very straight people. Yeah, it's a rural community as well, so they all understand farmers. And farmers are actually respected here, even by the government. The Department of Agriculture yeah. seems to kind of help farmers, you know, rather than trying to catch them out, they try to help them. So, uh, it's not a really catch out, probably. I, think. I suppose not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what's the one thing you think that made it a success moving over the one thing that probably me <laughs> <laughs> whoever asked that question thanks <laughs> they have a reason well there's a lot of red on you there <laughs> um, I think both of our backgrounds I think we decided initially we were going to give it 10 years. We weren't going to give up, which we could have done easily in the first year, <laughs> that we were going to give it a shot. And if it didn't work out, nothing ventured, nothing gained, nothing to lose. So, so we just go back. back. But uh, no, Plus, happy enough. No, I suppose maybe we were hitting our, people said, oh, we're after hitting our midlife crisis. And yeah. like I this. was 38 when we moved yeah, well, midlife was, crisis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, we said we'd come and give it our best, and uh, as Emily said there, but uh, no, we had the first two years. If you asked us, would we do it again? Maybe in the first two years, we might have been humming and hawing, uh, but now we definitely have no regrets. Actually, the first year, because we were both working back in Ireland, um, we'd only meet in the evenings and at the weekends, yeah. and here we were with one another 24-7. Plus, everywhere we went, any time we had to buy anything, we had to go to the shops because we couldn't pick up the phone and explain what we wanted over the phone to see that they have it. And then, because I was the only one that had a bit of French, I had to go with Declan. He would draw the pictures and point things out and know what he wanted, and Plus, I'd try and uh, translate. <laughs> remember that dictionary? George Livery? Give us the, a dictionary. He gave us this Farman dictionary, and there was pictures. and That we brought that with us, yeah. Yeah, and everywhere we went, we had two dictionaries. We and, didn't know about Google Translate at the time. Yeah, and there was no <laughs> sat-nav really as well. Um, so it was very difficult. And then sometimes we'd go off and we'd have to come back 
Because they'll be closed for their siesta. Oh yeah, there's clothes everywhere. They still do. Close yeah. at 12 and open at 2. So you've... And if you don't get there at least maybe half an hour beforehand, they're not inclined to, if you're, to take too long serving you in case it runs near 12 o'clock and they're time to shut up. That's, they're off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are there many French farmers' sons taking on the farms or are the farms just getting bigger and bigger like they are in Ireland? Well, there seems to be a lot, yeah, there's a lot of French farmers' sons to take it on, but the same as Ireland, I suppose, there's a lot where the, the sons aren't interested. They want to go off to the cities or the bigger towns. Same um, as anyone. I suppose it's the same as anywhere. You have some that are very interested. And if they do, they generally form a gig and join in with the parents, and it's a, a company. Uh, so they own maybe equal shares in it or whatever is the agreement between them. There's a lot of that in the... Bit of both. Yeah. Um, would you increase the number of cows? We are oh, we are. We are increasing, yeah. Uh, we have increased since we came as well. So. Yeah, we kept it back more heifers and we bought in heifers, seen as dehorning them the last one. And How many cows did we have when we arrived? Versus now. Well, with the first round, there was 61 plus 14 in calf efforts. Now your man might have some sold off before that, but that that's what we bought farm. and paid for. And then the second farm, when we bought it, there was cows on that. What was there? 60 as well. Yeah, I think the one. Yeah, about 60 as well. And 10 heifers. So this farm was Charlie, and the second farm we bought was Limousine. Uh, I used to breed Limousine in Ireland. So I prefer the limousine. Well, mm -hmm. about 180 cows now, and we're going up to 220. Hopefully, uh, we have put a lot of heifers in this year. Uh, we're scanning next week, and that's we know then, yeah. Huh? We know then. Yeah. yeah, and we'll have the hair test as well, I think, next week. So. And then we got the goats as well. Goats will be scanned the same day. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, be a busy week next week. Right. Um, what was my opinion on the move? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> she was eight years old when she moved. Yeah, I was eight when I <laughs> Didn't moved. have much choice. Probably wouldn't want to be too much older than that. Uh, well, I suppose I know a second language now. The school system is interesting over here if you know what you want to do. Um, just because when you do your, what would it be, the leave insert? Well, you pick which type of leaving cert you want to do. Yeah. yeah, so about three years before the leaving cert. So after the junior cert, basically you kind of decide what you want to do and then you go off to a school that specialises it. So then you, well, I went off boarding. And yeah, then at least when you come out with your leaving cert, if you don't want to go on and go to college or anything, you have got some sort of thing of if you want to work. I did cooking, so if you want to work in a restaurant, I could. And then if you do want to go to college, it's all free. Most of the, unless you go to a private school, it's all. Yeah, most of the, the, mm. you know, all the college colleges are free. Universities are, are free or very cheap anyway. Yeah. yeah. Even the whole schooling system is very cheap. I remember the first year, I think Luke went on a four day trip to Italy. I think we could maybe a bit more, four days. And I think the whole lot cost about 100 euros. Which included their accommodation, their trips, you know, the bus over and everything. Yeah, William went to Germany as well. Obviously, William went to Germany. And I went to London. And you went to London. <laughs> but, um, you know, the school system is very cheap. Very much subsidised. The meals are subsidised. They get three course dinners every day in school. You don't bring your own lunch. And that's all subsidised. You might pay something like two euros a day. or Even though I think now in Ireland there is some sort of system like that. It could be even better. Not sure. Um... And board was the same. You got Boarding. breakfast, yeah. lunch, dinner, everything in there. Three course meals and... Yeah, a lot of them go to boarding school from about 12 because it depends on what you pick. Luke picked agriculture. Yeah. So he went to an agriculture school about three quarters of an hour away. So he stayed there, went there Monday, came back Friday. You went down to Limoges to do so hotel, and and hotel and catering and that. Hospital and William went yeah. to Montluçon to do uh, literature and arts. So you all boarded, but that was very reasonable as well. So yeah, pretty good I suppose. Um, did Dad work in a garage back home and did he bring over his tools? Yes, yes, yes. 
uh, <laughs> yes, I, I work. I served my time in a garage in airport, a uh, small tractor garage. Mm. Uh, he wasn't an agent at the time, uh, but he used to do a lot of Fords. He used to import Fords from England, Texas, Ford 4000s, all the uh, 5000 that. And the then, ones that were wrong back in the day. Yeah. No, the ones you have now. And then I started on my own uh, doing uh, farm buildings, the sheds and the sheds, penning and all that. And then that kind of died down a bit and the gra- the we used to do grants for them and that went. So then I went uh, working in the, the mines uh, as a fitter and I was there till two weeks before I came here. What did you do in I worked in a German company in Bar for 14 years. It was a cable manufacturing company. And then I... They were closing down. It was after the Berlin Wall came down and they were pulling back a lot of business back to Germany. And then uh, I went to work in Chanel Pharmaceuticals in Lockray as a costing analyst. And I was there for five years. Mm-hmm. Right up until mm-hmm. about two weeks before we moved over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we're near the end. Do you plan to stay in France or will you be moving back to Ireland? Uh, well, me and you plan to stay. I don't know what you yeah. plan. <laughs> plan to stay for. Yeah. So Depends. Uh, there can be life threatening things and change everything. Um. The way we are now, we have no plans uh, to leave. We have some plans in the long, maybe, but we do talk about them now and again, but they do change every day. Uh, a, a lot of it is to do with travel in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so it all depends on the time human yeah. coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> right. Are any of the kids plan on taking over the farm? Don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no. So Luke has gone back to Ireland. Yeah. William is in Claremont, he has no interest in the farm, and I'd say I probably won't either. <laughs> so there you are. Yeah. <laughs> um if you were to do it again, would you still move? Yeah. 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 Looking back now, definitely, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I but as I said before, the first two years maybe, but now I've no regrets. Uh like you wouldn't get on, uh, do all this back in Ireland because you'd have to win about two lotteries. If you had a farm, you probably wouldn't have. If we'd had a farm back in Ireland, we probably wouldn't yeah, have been looking for a farm. Because we didn't. Yeah, well, we only had the nine so. acres, like I said. But um, no, it's nice to be able to get up, go out there in the morning, do your work, no travelling to work, travelling back, not depending on buses or anything like that either. And uh, you do, you're working for yourself. Oh. Yeah, it's a relax, very relaxed pace. Like you could be at hay here and li- you know leaving it there to the next day. And but sometimes know, it's, it's really weather. busy. Yeah, sometimes it's really busy. But yeah, times... we'd often have forty acres down at a time, and if you had that down in Ireland, you you wouldn't sleep for a week. Yeah, wet here at the minute, but at least we know we're going to get a summer. Yeah. No, the first year we came was the wettest year and and the coldest. The wettest and coldest they had it in 25 years. Yeah. We thought it was great. We came in October <laughs> and in February we got, what about? 18 inches of 18 snow. 18 inches of snow that lasted for about three weeks and it was minus, minus 18 degrees. And all the pipes were freezing and we were there. We didn't think it got this cold in France. Yeah. So, but since then, there's been the odd cold winter, but nothing been very mild. Yeah, the first four or five were fairly severe. Yeah. But now we already get a frost. Yeah. Yeah. So only, you've only got, what, two days of snow and it barely, yeah. barely even stuck. It didn't stick, yeah. Didn't. I wouldn't even call it snow. <laughs> but they were all well yeah. set up here for cold weather compared to... Yeah. 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 All the sheds, all the different trust systems and everything. So you'll already be doing all that again with you. Yep, and is it was a very hot summers? Some yep. Of them were. Yes, I think the hottest is probably about forty two degrees. 
Yeah. And those days you get up and you do what you have to do in the morning before while it's nice and cool. And then in the afternoon you just take a break because it's too hot to go out and work. Or else you're working in the shade. The are even stuff when people uh, cutting corn yeah. because combines were going yeah. far. Yeah. Um, combines were going far all the time. Fairly regularly, yeah. And on certain days, then the heavy lorries aren't allowed to drive on some of the, the minor roads because they'd be messing up the tarmac with the heat. Yeah. And just the same, and they're really cold weather. Yeah, true. Yeah, they weren't allowed to drive in the cold, is it? But you get used to it, and... Uh, it's not as bad now. I don't find it summers no. as hot. Or the winter. Well, they're, they seem to be longer and drier, but no, maybe 32 degrees. I have no bones okay. at all. Uh, about the heat, I, I love it. Uh, you could say from April to nearly December, you could be going around in a pair of shorts. Uh, and well, that suits me, I love it. So. The only thing would be the drought. Yeah, 2011, we'll have to do that again. I won't, 2011, we learned more that year, right? Full episode of 2011. Yeah, worst, worst drought, drought we had. Worst drought we had, yeah. That was the year. I was really worried that year as well, so uh, we won't mention it all. <laughs> and if you were to do it again, last question, if you were to do it again, what would you do different? Nothing. Because you just come in and you just... Everything was perfect. It wasn't perfect, but oh, you just have to handle it. You learn a lot. Like if you were to go and be extra cautious and... One thing maybe we could have looked at more farms, but if we did then we'd probably see too many and never make up our mind. I don't think they'd be too much different anyway. We both said, I remember the day we drove into this farm and we both said, like we had dogs, you all seen our dogs, but it was enough to we're move. driving in the road and I just it nice. loved it. Now Emily hated the house, but we said, oh, it's dog friendly. There's a lot <laughs> of work to be done to the house like that. Uh, and like we'd have the dogs out the whole time. Uh, they just lay around there, you never have to lock them up. And uh, it's just the whole scenery, there's lovely woods and everything. So I know when I seen this farm, even though I had Shirley cattle on it, uh, unless so something crazy happened, that's what try for this one. And we did. It's a heaven for dogs, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's the last question. So. Hope I answered them all. I hope I didn't forget any. If I did, I will reply to them in the comments. <laughs> yeah. And unless you have anything else to add on? No, not really. Uh, I don't think. Au revoir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Au revoir. See you in the next one. <laughs> yeah. À la prochaine. Yeah. Prochaine. Okay, à la prochaine. <laughs>